Okay, then please uh, welcome Vidris. So I'm Dimitris, I'm a consultant from an architect and a performance engineer. I'm based in Prague, but I work for clients around the world. And today I will be talking about uh, building scalable and maintainable design systems using my framework, IOTA CSS and React. Uh, so, what is a design system? So, usually people confuse design system for a UI kit or a style guide or a set of print, a set of like good practices or coding rules, uh, but actually it's a combination of all of this and it pretty much represents your the visual language of your product. For example, when a new member, a new developer comes to your team, the first thing he has to see is your code base. So think about like uh, the design system as the way that your designers is communicating with your developers and the UX people. Uh, so why do you need a design system? I could literally list like a ton of reasons that you do that, but uh, I'll tell you the story about food and steam. Uh, everybody has seen it at some point in his life. And actually why it's so bad? It's like too long, too messy, it's impossible for the cooks to remember it. it has no consistency, all the ingredients are like completely unrelated. And then also the dishes are completely unrelated to each other. So the, the chefs were building it, they have to remember like a thousand recipes. So it's never perfect, it's never even close the same. Uh, so how a good restaurant menu looks like? Uh, it should look like this. Um, so it's like short and to the point, it's clean, straightforward. It uses a small amount of ingredients, which it could be fresh. Um, it feels and smells like the restaurant. So when you see the menu, you understand what the people in the kitchen are, their level, their skills, everything. And it's consistent, it's seasonal, because it's based on, on each season, different vegetables, and it's easy to learn for any new set who comes. Um, so now let's see a little bit about the process of making the bar restaurants menu. Um, so you probably just do what others do. Um, ask your friends what they want, right? Um, ask your clients what they want, like, what do you want to eat? So I just put it in the menu. And then we try to please everybody, and for every dish we have like 10 variations, so we can please even the people who are not pleased by the previous one. And boy, we have a menu. <laughs> and then, let's see how a good restaurant <coughs> does its menu. So it studies the ingredients, um, finds the one that represents the kitchen, uh, finds the ones that are available fresh in the area, uh, finds out like ingredients that the team can work with, um, tries to figure out how many ingredients can I store so it can be always fresh, uh, how big the kitchen is, how big the team is, how skilled the team is, and based on all those it creates a, a, a smart menu that it reuses a lot of the ingredients. Um, so. So what's the benefits of a good restaurant menu? Um, you learn to work with ingredients, no recipes. Uh, less ingredients, more consistency, easier to learn dishes, um, better workflow in the kitchen. Um, also, fresh ingredients, and this is really important, and it's associated to a design system. Easier onboarding of new team members. So when a new chef comes in, he doesn't have to learn a thousand recipes and stay next to Adsep for forever. Uh, he just has to just spend a week looking at the ingredients and he's ready. So the exact same principles apply to a design system. It's like, it's all about the process of how you're making it. You have to load only what you need and you just reuse as, as more as you can. You have to be strict and you just have to follow processes and not recipes. Um, so, enough of the food. Uh, it's nine, we're hungry. Let's <laughs> uh, now let's talk about code. So, what is IOTA CSS? So, IOTA CSS is pretty much a design agnostic framework, actually maybe the only design agnostic framework, uh, who adapts into your design as instead of you adapting um, on like the framework, you your design adapt to the framework. And also what it does is it gets a set of settings and it generates only what you need in order to build the application you're building. 
So you don't know the whole framework, it's small bunches, small little tools. Um, its architecture looks like this. So it's um, five different, six different categories of settings, tools, base, objects, components, and utilities. So imagine like the settings as like general settings, like your colors, typography sizes, uh, whatever is general is shared among the different modules. Uh, then the tools are mainly uh, SAS mixings and functions. Uh, the base are whatever you want to apply um, something to the body or something to a tag directly, you use a base tag. And here is the most complicated part who people in the React community are getting confused a little bit. In React, everything is a component. Well, here we have objects and components. The difference is that an object is like, think about the structure element. So a media object has a fixed element on the one side and a fluid element on the other side. So this is a structure element. The grid is a structure element. The list, the container. So there are elements that they don't describe their content. You can use it in so many unrelated to the content cases, like the grid, you use it in so many cases. Same as the list, the horizontal, uh, horizontal list could be tabs, for example. Uh, components now, uh, they're pretty much UI elements. So they have cosmetic CSS, and you can override them to like, set them to your own design style. And then our utilities are explicit classes, high specificity, very explicit classes. Um, it could be a utility for a color, a background color, a text align, or positioning, margin padding, all those little like, things are utilities. So let's look at this little layout. This layout is built with IOTA and it actually it doesn't use uh, any line of CSS at all. Like if you configure the framework, as we can see here, we have different text colors, which is the color utility. We have a three column grid and a two column grid here. We have uh, center line elements, which are again a utility. Then we have a horizontal and a vertical list, which are again a list object. Up here we have a media object, fixed element here, fluid element here, and here is the same but is reversed. And as we can see here, it's also the two media objects are also responsive, so they automatically collapse. And all of these are pretty much settings that you enable, so the framework responds and loads the code for these individual little pieces. Uh, for example, if you don't use a block list, you don't load it, you load only horizontal list. Um, so, so this is how pretty much IOTA works. It's like a set of tiny little modules, and if you combine them, you can build more complicated user interfaces. Um, now, where React fits here? So, from the previous example, this, think about React as your dish. Like React is what combines those little pieces, these little ingredients, and it actually makes them more friendly to uh, JavaScript developers. Because JavaScript developers, when they see CSS, they have an allergy sometimes. <laughs> uh, so what React does, it, it helps a lot of this. So let's think about this little UI here. Oh, yeah, that has more. Cool. So what you see usually in the design is this. What I see in IOTA is this. It's pretty much a type object a margin, another type object, a margin, and then there's a media object, and then one avatar, which is a custom component, and another two um, type objects. Uh, so, before I proceed, I would like to mention that uh, I just released this React IOTA CSS, which is IOTA CSS with React, and the only thing it does is, is three things, as we can see. The one is it maps the CSS objects to the React component, so when you use a container, it automatically produces something like this. Uh, then it maps the um, access settings of each object to the React property, so we say container size, that thing happens. And the last thing, which is pretty cool, and it's not visible, um, is that, I don't know how to make it visible. Um, so what it does, it, it also um, maps all the utilities on the actual property. So for example, if you say container u text sender, what's going to do is it's going to create your u text sender, which is the sender utility. 
So now let's see a little bit um, how we can code in React this little design here. So first you import all the stuff you need from the actual React IOTA Systems library. So H1, H2, H3, it's just a type object with uh, a specific tag like H1, H2 or paragraph. And then we're loading our media object and our custom avatar component, which is not so important. Um, this is everything that the JavaScript guy needs to know. Only thing he cares about, he doesn't care about what happens in the in the bottom. He, this is the uh, actual properties that this component will have, and he just have to map this to the state or however he wants to pass the data in there. And here, where the actual magic happens, so. As we can see here, there is no custom CSS at all. There's nothing. So what we see is H1 size large, margin bottom medium, U8 bold, and a color black. Um, same applies for the paragraph. So what happens is, if we see here, we actually have a large typography with um, a medium spacing. And then we have the body typography with a larger spacing. And then we have our media object. Um, so this is how you actually, you know, structure the whole uh, component. So the advantage thing of this is that you're actually not writing any more CSS. Like everybody's like, oh, I'm going to use uh, CSS in JS. I'm going to scope my CSS, and you ended up writing the same things in a hundred places again and again and again. So right now, as you can see, I don't even write code. I just use utilities. And because I configured the utilities in my design system properly, now the only thing I do is I play with Lego. I just put things in a row, and the whole UI stands there. Um, so something uh, also to explain is what is this base object? So every one of those components here, they're actually extending the base object. And the base object is the only thing it does. It, it has this mechanism of parsing those utilities into actual classes. That's all. Uh, so because I want my component, when you use it to be able to get those utilities, I use the base as the wrapper, and I pass all the extra properties into it. Um, then I just, you know, just uh, violate my properties, and I'm just uh, exporting the post. So now you're probably wondering, where is this size, uh, like margin, bottom, medium, weight, bold, color, black comes from. Uh, none of this is predefined. Like, you probably use the frameworks or UI kits like um, Bootstrap that has a primary, secondary, um, sizes of buttons, everything. IOTA works completely different. Um, it uses like SAS maps, so you define only what you need. For example, when we see this um, gutter small on the medium, on the media object, what is actually is is just this. So it's just I load the CSS for the media object, and then I just pass those settings. And here my small object, um, and this is the I wanted to have this example to show that uh, also IOTA is fully responsive. As you can see, for all the devices in the nav, it uses 10 pixels, and then it scales to the different breakpoints for 20 or 30 pixels. So you can literally name it how you want it. You can make it behave on the breakpoints how you want it. You can create as many breakpoints as you want them, and you can name them how you like them. So it's completely flexible. So here, we're creating a media object, and the spacing between the two, um, the fixed and the fluid element, is 10 in mobiles, 20 in tablets, and, and 30 pixels in, in like desktops. Um, and the same applies for the utilities. Like, we use two colors, yeah, hex color, whatever. A sample. So we use like two colors. So I've defined my colors here, and then I just create my color utility. And what it generates me is this code. So it actually generates me only what I tell it to generate. Uh, usually, what you see in uh, in frameworks is that you usually have like a top, like 30 colors. You don't even use them. Here, it just generates exactly what you need. Um, now, the question comes here: is like. Why are you going back to your SAS to configure it and then you use a React component to pass the actual configuration instead of just doing it directly, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, that's the question everybody asks. Well, because that's not maintainable. That's not maintainable. Was that? Sorry? Me or him? No, no, you. It's not maintainable. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly, but everybody's like, because uh, the buses, for example, uh, now they're similar. Um, it says that every component could be directly configured where the component is. Uh, my approach is completely different. Um, and the design system should be strict. So your CSS, uh, CSS is where you define how your design system should look like. And then uh, every time you need to add something new, you should go to the designer. He accepts it. Then you put it on global settings. And when it's there, it's only able to be used. Uh, by doing something like this, you want to end up with the person, the React developer, to start implementing colors and sizes. And this shouldn't happen because it's impossible to maintain that. And also, it may break a lot of the rules from the design or anything else. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much all about the talk. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, so, here is several links that are pretty useful. Um, I wrote a, a pretty nice article introducing the framework in the medium, which will explain the framework better. Um, that probably did today. Um, then is the documentation. The IOTA plate is actually uh, the CLI of the framework. So in one command, you can set up the framework in like literally less than a second. It set up all the actual architecture and everything you need. And then the React IOTA CSS is a library I deployed from actually, I posted GitHub from the bus today, coming here. So it's pretty new, it's quite stable, I tested it, but uh, it's still in beta. Feel free to use it. There's nothing to break in there. <laughs> it needs some optimization, but it works. Um, and IOTA casts, please subscribe. It's pretty much the only channel I actually share any new updates, and right now it's in a really active development state. Um, so you will receive emails about that, and also I'm preparing some free, um, actually, screencast about everything you need to do for the framework. Thank you very much.